May 21st, this is Dave Schurter. Um, I got an email from someone who wanted me to speak about certain things on a case of abduction of the abducted boy Johnny Gosh that my parents were also involved with. Um, I think it's a good idea. Um, the people against me will focus on the Jacob Wetterling case, um, saying that I've been disproved. But uh, the whole thing with the Jacob Wetterling case that I could not get over was that I went on the John B. Wells show, spoke about Jacob Wetterling, spent two hours talking about Jacob Wetterling and my family's connection to it, and then less than two weeks later, um, and less than two weeks later, a 28-year-old cold case that hadn't been solved, they all of a sudden had a perp, a confession, and a body. So let's talk about a case that hasn't been solved. Let's talk about Johnny Gosh. Johnny Gosh was a newspaper boy who was abducted in West Des Moines in the 80s, um, West Des Moines, Iowa, and he was one of three. Now, um, what my family's connection to this is that my Aunt Sandy and Uncle Walt, Sandy and Walt Davis, lived in West Des Moines. Um, I, you know, lived there basically all their adult lives. And so that was the connection that we had to West Des Moines. Um, my father, I've spoken about this before, but my father was telling people, he was coming clean before he died. He was telling people that he had committed crimes against children and uh, he was trying to make things right. That's what is pushing me to stay in this. Um, not just that, but my faith, I believe, the, the sins of the father fall squarely upon the shoulders of the son. And so it is my job to keep going where my dad left off. So Johnny Gosh got abducted. Um, I know that Noreen Gosh, who is Johnny Gosh's mother, spoke to my father because Noreen Gosh herself told me about this. And the person wanted me to speak about two groups in connection to the Johnny Kosh case, the Aquazino brothers, which I've been spelling it as it sounds. I, I knew these brothers, these three brothers from the French Cafe. They worked at the French Cafe. They were trafficking kids in the bar that was connected to the French Cafe in the basement called the Underground. But Aquazinos, here I gotta get the thing because I won't spell it right either. A C Q U A Z I N N O. Now, the Aquazino brothers actually grew up across the street from my family um, and were my older brothers, my older brother and sister's best friends. Now, you have to understand, the youngest of my oldest siblings is 12 years older than I am. My oldest sister, Cindy, was 16 years older than I was, so a great deal older than I am. Um, the Aquazinos are the three brothers that Noreen Gosh goes on and on and on about um, being connected to Johnny Gosh's abduction. Now, I don't trust Noreen Gosh. I don't like Noreen Gosh. Um, when I first got investigated with this, when the, the first couple videos I did on YouTube, I had a woman by the name of Rachel Bengley who was connected to a website called Franklin franklinfiles.net contact me on YouTube, got me to come over to Franklin Files because they were supposed to be all interested in the investigation of Johnny Gosh. They listened to what I had to say for about four months, and then I found out later on that they're called government sponge sites. They bring in survivors or people, whistleblowers, people who know. They get as much information as they possibly can from you, and then they turn on you, and that's what happened. And uh, Noreen Gosh knows about the brothers. Um, she, she knows about the brothers. Um, I told her. Um, she was the one who told me that my father called um, the, the whole, called her, um, which is the whole reason why when my father was sick, my stepmother was taking the phone off the hook in the basement because my dad couldn't call out anymore. That's why I'm pretty sure since he was telling everybody that it's in his Methodist hospital hospice notes. And uh, if anybody contacts one of his doctors or nurses, they'll be able to tell them what my father was saying too. So you don't have to just take my 
word for it, but getting officials to investigate this is damn near impossible. Sam Soda is the other person that they wanted to talk about. Um, what's interesting is the, the Aquazino brothers and Sam Soda were all Italian. Um, Sam Soda was my boss at a gay bar called The Stage Door when I was 19. The interesting thing about The Stage Door is that it was directly across the street from the Omaha police headquarters where Robert Wadman worked. Robert Wadman was chief of police. He was the one who um, Alicia Owen actually made accusations against. Alicia Owen went to jail. She's known even today as a inmate in Nebraska who spent the most time in solitary as any the, the, uh, than any other prisoner in Nebraska. So they kept her in solitary. Robert Wadman was chief of police. Sam Soto worked at the stage door. Um, Short had this horrible cologne that he bathed in, you know, and uh, he is connected to the Johnny Gosh case. And the interesting thing about the stage door is that it, on the other end of the block was a bar called the Hollywood Bar. It was another gay bar. It was the bar that and they had a dungeon in the basement of it. Um, and that was where the snuff films were being filmed at. And allegations in Omaha came out that there were snuff films being filmed there of children. And instead of investigating, they uh, tore down the Hollywood bar and built a city parking garage, which still sits on it today. Robert Wadman, the chief of police, um, there's another interesting coincidence to this whole situation. Um, Gary Caridori was an investigator who was trying to investigate Franklin, Franklin Credit. That's what they call this whole mess in 80s concerning child trafficking and all of that. Gary Caridori and his son, his I believe he was eight years old, his son AJ, were in Chicago watching a baseball game. Gary Caridori called his office before they were flying back. He had a private plane and said that he had all the evidence to prove Franklin and all of that. On the way, flying from Chicago to Omaha, um, Gary Caridori's plane went down. Um, a lot of people said it exploded in the sky, but it crashed in Illinois. Funny enough, whose jurisdiction was it in? Chief of Police Robert Wadman, who was no longer Chief of Police in Omaha, Nebraska, he was in Illinois. And Gary Caridori's plane crashed in his jurisdiction on the way to Omaha after he had called his office saying that he had everything proven, that he could prove everything. And so these are all connected, you know, and I, again, you know, they'll focus on Jacob Wetterland and say, oh, David was wrong because now they've proven Jacob Wetterland. Well, let's focus on Johnny Gush. I mean, it's not like I don't have several cases to focus on concerning my parents. Jacob Wetterland was by far not the only one. And uh, my dad had come forward and said what was going on. Um, in, in the 80s, the, there's an area in the old market, which is right where the stage door and Hollywood Bar and the Omaha headquarters were just up the street from. It was called the old market. And in the 80s, it was a place for kids. It, it, was, it was centralized for kids. They were, there was a Godfather's Pizza that they were getting kids from that Godfather's Pizza and then taking them down in the bar underneath called Stars, which was also a gay restaurant. And uh, that's where they were abducting and selling kids and prostituting kids out. There was a lot of prostitution. I also worked at Stars, you know. And so uh, because the old market was a place for kids, it's where everyone wanted to work. And uh, this was when I was 19 years old, 19, 20 years old. And, uh, but I'm just doing this video because someone asked about the Aquazino brothers. Um, they obviously can find information. They worked at the French cafe. There has to be, um, at least reports to the government that they worked there. You know, there, there has to be. And, uh, funny enough, when I started doing this investigation, the French cafe closed. And so it's interesting how it works. But this is the video that I wanted. I'm not saying anything I have not said repeatedly before. You know, I'm just saying the same old things over and over and over again. Contrary to Mesner and his little group, 
I have never once contradicted myself and I've never changed my story. It's just getting anybody to investigate my family for their involvement in child trafficking has been worse than pulling teeth. Um, it, you just can't do it. You know, it, no one will do it. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, again, my father was coming clean at the end of his life. He was telling people, he was calling people. He told me, he told my older sister, Kathy, you know, we, we, he was trying to come clean. And as his son, it is simply the right thing for me to do, to try and follow this through and to finish what he started. So that's my video. Bye.